Good morning. Couldn't help it. I had to take you along on a fall walkabout today before we have crazy busy weekends of members coming to pick. I want to show you how this has been an incredibly abundant year. It's just been wild. So wild that we've actually been giving members four bushels of apples free. That's 160 pounds of apples free. There's so much. We need to move fruit and need to move crop. Here comes the horse. Let me show you the hazelnuts. So our hazelnuts, this is the last one. We picked it last night. We've been having a great go with hazelnuts. We had an early harvest and these were our last ones. It's, it's not fall yet, technically, but uh, the fog has just burnt off. There was a fog here in the open field. The grass is heavy, heavy with dew every, every morning. So what are we today? We're middle of September. We haven't had a frost yet. The mornings are cool. It's 10 degrees right now. Mornings are cool. Have nights are, yeah, nights and mornings are cool. The daytimes are nice and not too hot, just in the lower 20s, maybe 20. Perfect weather to work in. And so, this has been a, a great time. But these hazelnuts, these were all hazelnuts planted originally as a windbreak by Frank Tooten so that his vegetable area, which was all this in here, was all vegetables at one point. And we just have a little bit of it back there. So the vegetables would have a, a good windbreak. And boy, does it, did it move in as a windbreak. I mean, these are probably what now? five meters, 15 feet high. So they've done extremely well and they have produced extremely well this year. Uh, we've got a good stockpile of hazelnuts, but it was interesting how there's so many critters in here. I mean, there's so many chipmunks in here. The blue jays, chipmunks, crows, ravens, they've all been having their fill of hazelnuts. And so what we've been doing is kind of like this one. We've been walking along. And oh, this one doesn't have. We walked along and we checked at the base of the hazelnuts. And anyone that had hazelnuts remains, well, these probably won't have much showing because they were picked a while ago, two weeks ago. We have to get them early. Everything is early this year a little bit of a jungle through here. Everything is early, and so the hazelnuts were early. This is usually the late hazelnuts, usually the end of September, so we're a good 10 to 15 days earlier. It seems like it's finally slowed down with the cooling nights, but it was accelerating. So if we saw, and here's a bit, if we saw hazelnuts and especially husks at the base, that had been freshly peeled because that's what they do, especially the chipmunks. They gather them and they peel them right away, put them in their cheeks and go into their little winter homes to stack them up. And yes, I took away hazelnuts from some of the chipmunks, but you know what? They have put away so many nuts and that's why there's so many of them because they've done very well. Yes, I share 
uh, but I do want a crop as well. So we picked them, and uh, yeah, they've been they've been very busy, and we've been busy too. Finally, had a very easy summer. Took really took it relaxed, very relaxed this year, and we did come in here had a, a crew did that video on the irrigation. So we raised these lines and we still have some more to do down there. So we'll get we'll get at them. Hopefully we'll do a few more this fall. Get the posts in this fall for next year. But the harvest, especially in these old in the old organic the old trees, the trees that have been here since the beginning. This is what's left of the monoculture organic. It's not so monoculture anymore because we've been actually We've been planting cedars in here as a wildlife habitat. Uh, we've been transplanting some of our best. Oh, bows onto something there. We've been putting in some of the hazelnuts from our best hazelnuts. And so this is gonna be a, a nice windbreak in here as well, halfway point in the orchard. So good to give them. Wow, I hadn't come in here yet. We did have a few people start picking in here, so I could see the lower crop here is it has been picked out at least in the first trees. Let's see what it looks like further on. But these trees were so loaded down, they were kind of like like that one, but the whole way through, all the way down. And so these have done extremely well. Yeah, whoa. We had a lot of people with four boxes and some people took their four boxes right away. And uh, yeah, it's good to give a lot of fruit. And it's been amazing because we give all this fruit away. So people join and it's $60. It's this year to join as a member. And then they pick four boxes. I mean, that's a lot of apple. You got to know what you're going to do with with that much oh yeah here they didn't so they just picked the beginning of the rows pretty well because here there's quite a bit of apples lower down well you didn't have to go very far and there was just you could pick a few boxes many of these trees a tree this size has one box up there one bushel box of 40 pounds up there and it has another close to well they did probably have another 40 pounds down here so these trees should produce two bushels of apples, two and a half each per tree. So that, if it's two and a half, that's 100 pounds of apples uh, on the tree. Oh, there's voles in here. That's okay. We'll do a big mowing. Have to mow before this. This will be the open weekend for these. And so, yeah, now here this hasn't been picked at all. it's good to give and people i mean i give i'd rather give than do a discount i like joel salton's take i mean that you're better to give than to give a discount yeah, look at the size of these apples they've really sized up well they're looking really really nice the quality is excellent in these apples yeah i consider them excellent if i can get 50 percent of number one fruit then to me that's that's excellent having some with a bit of defect of either some scab or or a bite by some insect that's that's fine that if it's 50 percent or less damaged in some way a little bit that's great i'm i'm good with that and so these these have produced really well and it's curious because these are actually better quality than the apples in the permaculture orchard. And I've had to ask myself, what's the big difference? I mean, these are more of a monoculture. They're, you know, it's, it's in terms of trees, it's mostly just apples. There's a few interplants already in here. There's a cedar over there. But one of the big differences is it's just not as thick in here. <laughs> It really isn't, and I'm realizing, wow, the, the, I really screwed up on how thick I made the orchard. I made it way too thick. So there's too many trees too tight. And 
if I can emphasize the point that, you know, if you're not sure, when in doubt, space them out. You won't regret that your trees have space. Even these, for example, you see they're, they're, barely, they're barely touching anymore. Also, by the way, they're cropping, so these branches could have been way out there. But because they cropped so heavy, the branches have absolutely come down. Like, look at this. This branch probably was all the way out here. So as far as the other tree, I can feel there's a good 15 pounds of fruit on this one branch. So that's what you want. You want the branches to come down and then you get an umbrella shape. Go see, well, go see the pruning course or at least the pruning videos to understand how to get this. I mean, this is exactly what you want. See this branch here? That one branch, you see, it came out and it could have been horizontal or just a bit below, but now with the load of fruit, every branch has absolutely come down and weighed down. And if you can grasp that one point and every branch is on here because I've left only about 12 branches on these trees. I mean, fruit bearing age branches I've left. And oh, there's one I didn't. You see that one went is going upwards. So that's the exception. For some reason, it, it didn't get cropped when it was young enough and I didn't train it. So there is fruit on there, but not enough to bend that size of a branch. You want a branch either to be already at the horizontal when it's going to really crop and then it does that. So well, a little bit of lesson on training branches and, and pruning. But I mean with two bushels per tree and there's I don't know how many trees there are in here. There's quite a few. Uh, there's there is enough by far for everyone and so we've got too much crop i consider too much which you think well isn't that a good thing having too much well it's good but when the amount of fruit on the tree becomes a problem for me i send that problem to our members and members are glad for it you know there's too much Please, I have a problem, too much crop, so I'm going to give you four bushels. If nobody really, a few people have bought more, but most people don't need more than four. I mean, 160 pounds, you better do something with your fruit because that's a lot of fruit. Look at this little branch. It was a pretty small branch, completely loaded, loaded down with fruit. So that's what you want. Oh, look at the nice, look at the nice mushrooms in here on this wood chip go see that wood chip video from last fall but look at that and the wood chip has stayed the fact of bagging underneath has done a great job and that probably contributed to these trees having such a load look at that i mean that branch is not in a good angle not at all in my consideration in fact nothing on this one is in a good angle but i mean isn't that nice in the morning sun and all the way down? So that's what you want. You want your trees to be producing and loaded and, and bent down. And so, yeah, that problem of too many apples is going to be resolved by the members. And oh, I can show you down here the early apples. So a lot of people have actually already filled in their two, three, four bo boxes and they've taken early apples and we're just starting in our late fall storage apples so these are those are uh, normally end of september so since we're two weeks this will be the weekend to pick them and then these are actually mid-october this is ida red and these are a real keeper you can keep these in a cool space if you keep them in the fridge you can keep them till june of the next year and then in these, they've done a great job. This is the ones that were picked this weekend. I mean, it got picked clean. And people came back and said, well, that's it. They're, they're pretty well done. I mean, there's a, you, 
probably scrounge a half a box, uh, 20 pounds of apples left. And these early ones too were so loaded down. Yep, when the branches are bent down like that, you know that there is a load of apples. Yep, yep, yep. Nice crop. Nice crop. Uh, and and they've been picked so we're really pleased with how much everything's been picked clean and now we'll come through and we'll do I see a bit of may, either fire blight or just dying branches up there we'll clean those off now that the, tr the fruit are off it's easy before the branches disappear it's a nice time to be pruning these dead branches because it just makes it so easy to see. So we'll come back in here and clean these branches so it goes pretty quick. Yeah, these, the irrigation system really needs a rebuild. And that's, hopefully we'll get to this row because we've got our posts set in here, angled posts. Oh, show you the hazelnuts, uh, not hazelnuts. Some of you know what that is. Those are different walnuts, either black walnuts or Japanese walnut. And so, yes, I'm basically sacrificing these last trees, apple trees, because I know they're going to die. I, now I don't, you know, go see my video, these trees kill trees, because, yes, the walnuts will kill the apple trees, no question. But I've dedicated this back part of the orchard of the farm to the hazel, uh, to the walnuts. So this will all be a, a walnut grove of mix of those two species. And well, I know now that I don't want them where I've got a lot of trees. So here, for example, we put, we didn't put any in these rows where the apples are thick at the back, but the trees, the walnuts may kill them with time. I'm quite surprised how far their effect will spread. And they basically killed out all of the close apples trees in the front. Oh, I'm here early today, even before the the gravel pit is uh, in operation early morning today. And so they've been digging as well and adding to the, their really extending the gravel pit. Oh, that's the boss. He's there this morning checking it out. They've, had, they've really extended the lake next door. The lake used to not quite come to here. It used to come to about there in that part. And I'll show you, it's, it's quite amazing how much they've dug. They, they've been really busy this year, digging and digging and digging. And they needed to have a huge stockpile, but they've been shipping out so much and gravel that they they haven't been putting up much of a stockpile I mean there's a few piles here but that's not a lot so you see each one is a literally a mountain but they're moving this I gotta talk to them to find out why but they've been building and building and, and I mean digging and digging and just to show you now when we come here see like it would be something the lake would stop here that would be the shore and now if we come in here look at that instead of here the lake has actually been extended all the way to there and they will still be because i could see they've got that ready they will dig more of that which is great for us because hey we live next to a growing lake and this is gonna the fog is burning off of there but it's gonna be a bigger lake we might actually end up with a little bit of a microclimate from the lake having such a an extended effect i mean that's starting to be quite a volume of water that when it warms up its effect will last for a while we're going through the old, uh, the old, the new seeded orchard in here. And, uh, oh, look at all the spider webs. Do you see that? 
Oh, look at them all in here. They've caught the morning dew. Yeah, all these spider webs in here. Look at there. Huh, pretty neat. I like all diversity. I like it all. It, I want to see a whole lot of it. So we put in this year, because the plums we planted didn't work as seeds, we bought seedlings, uh, plums. So these are some seedling plums. So they'll give us who knows what. Uh, I mean, they'll give us something, but it may not be exactly what we're looking for. Still have some have some seedling pines from the pine row so I'll leave that in it's seedlings this is the intention here is to have seedlings but it's really making me realize that, you know space them out give the trees some space so here's one of our seedlings <clears throat> and so those were actually transplanted seedlings I took tiny little ones this spring and move them out here and it's been dry I mean these trees had it tough so only the toughest survived which is what I want that's the whole idea of seedlings is I want there to be a, a selection I want there to be a, a weeding out of trees that that really aren't adapted to our conditions and this has been a great test year I mean any of the ones that are here I know that they at least are tough for the dry period. I mean, there should have been trees here. This is a green. Green is a uh, pear, and, and they all died out. They just burnt right out. I mean, this is pretty dry in here. Look at this. This is just a, this is a sandbox. See? So you think, oh, yeah, but it's topsoil. Yeah, there isn't a lot of top to this topsoil, I'll tell you. Uh, but, you know what? That's the idea. You make the toughest ones survive, because that's the ones that I want. I want the toughest trees. We did give them. I mean, they had some mulch, so there's another one. They're tiny, but they look, they're leaved. So next spring, these trees will follow the spring moisture and they will put down roots deeper and they should grow really nicely and this area here this was a project uh, did with stefano putting in some brush piles in here this has attracted so many birds the, the birds now is crazy how there's so few birds around right now and yet we had wilds i mean just incredible amounts especially of uh, tree swallows but also bluebirds and different sparrows it's been an incredible year for uh, for birds we actually finished harvesting we had a we put some potatoes they did not produce well in here i mean potatoes need some water they did not get water in here hardly hardly at all let's see did this one take oh yeah there's two of them look how healthy those are so there's a, what is it? Yes, it's a pear, and that's a pear. So we need more pear trees. Even if those, even if they give me a spiny tree, I'm fine with that, because we'll overgraft with some of our better ones. So I'd like to put in more patent, which is a late September pear. That's doing really nice. Um, I'd put in, I guess I would put in some summer crisp because we really need an early pear. We get some, but I'm looking for an, a late pear, like a, a real storage early October pear. The ones we have are just too susceptible to fire blight. The two we have the most of, which is uh, uh, Anjou and Summer Crisp. I mean, Summer Crisp used to be my favorite pear, and now it's it's toast i mean it's completely toasted out they're 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 all got fire blight and it's killing the trees and yeah you know okay they're showing me that they're not doing well here here's another one got it covered a bit when we picked up the potatoes well actually there's two or three trees right there 
See that? There's one here, one here, one here. So sometimes when we dug them up, there was more than one pair, which makes sense because if a if you took a pair and you dropped it and then you squished it and it got squished, then all the seeds were there in contact. So that's what happens. And oh, look at this. This one's doing nicely. So that plum has actually shot from the base because what was planted really had it tough. I mean, this has been a test year that those trees survived without water. Well, that's testimony to really tough trees. And, oh yeah, you could really feel the cool air still. And here in the seeded orchard, this is our one row where we put in some apples. And I put in some seedling apples, uh, I don't know, just because we had a few apples in this row. So we put in every third tree in the trio system here would be some apple trees. I don't need more apple. I already have too much apple. I need more plums. I mean, gosh, we sold out of plums and we just picked and cleaned off the tops. But plum season is over. That's done with. Uh, hazelnut season is over. That's done with. So that's nice. Early apples are done. I'll show you a sneak peek of a tree that may disappear because it's right next to this walnut. Uh, but this one has become my, my favorite now. And uh, I hope nobody picks this tree because we want to get some to put away. And this is Blue Permain, an old apple. So some of you say, oh, what kind? I like this one now. I mean, this one has become really a nice nice and this you kind of get a, just a look here you get a bit of that blue on some of them it comes across more than on others um a really nice a really hard apple but a different taste it really does taste differently if you saw that i don't know where i talked about that maybe the spring or summer i think it was the summer walkabout you still see the remnant of that spring frost. So the branches came back through, the frost came, and it was interesting, because look, this is, you know, that's almost six feet high, and the frost hit. So this was a, this was a test year. It was an incredibly, it was early spring, and then very late frost. I have not seen a frost that late uh, the chicken just laid an egg. I haven't seen a, a frost that late ever here. Uh, look at these cedars now doing so nicely. Yeah, they're really doing nicely in here. So I'm putting I'm putting eastern white cedar. And look at some of these trees. I finally figured out how to prune uh, golden russet, which is a tip bearer. You see, tip bearers. They produce on the tips of the branches and the, the fruit are smaller because there's so much of it. But the key is you let a branch go and don't, don't mess with it, don't prune it. And then when it's reached the size and the age, it will produce. And then those branches should pull the branches down. You could train it, but this is a, a non-pruning block in here. I don't prune in here. It does look like it hasn't been pruned. And to that, um, it's been interesting how yesterday we went through here and there's a rough grouse in here because it's starting to look like a bit of a forest. I've never, we've had one rough grouse in here in all the years and now another one has moved in. Oh, look at that. Some of you know that, autumn olive. So that's one of our nitrogen fixers, new ones we tried. And it's, uh, it's doing well, it's doing well. Huge year on these Egyptian onions. So got an intern here, Mathieu, who's uh, very keen and will be, will be doing some weeding and planting. So the idea of weeding and planting is we see where we wanna weed something out. Let's say these grasses here, they've come through. So we'll weed them out 
we'll pull everything out of that hole. And then we find the hole in the mulch. Like here, there's the hole. And then we'll take the Egyptian onions and we'll just place them there. That's it. Like that's, that's all we'll do. We'll do quick weeding and planting. And these, we got loads of them. So we'll fill up a pouch. We'll do it with a, a whole lot and then we'll, we'll just weed and plant. Because if you just weed, you're really wasting your time. Because if you weed something, I guarantee you'll have something else come up. So if you don't fill that void or that space with something, you're just wasting time. Some of you know these trees, I'm sure. And there are a few nuts up there, at least husks. I don't know if they're filling. They haven't been filling well. And it's just because we have just two American chestnuts. Uh, they don't have blight, at least not yet. And we'll see. That's a little experiment. We're doing experiments. I like experimenting. But this area has become really thick. And if you want, this is the closest to what would be a food forest. I mean, food forest to me is in a northern climate is is a little it could work if you're doing a single row or a single area and but when you get when it starts to be larger your trees canopy touches and your trees which are fruiting usually unless you're doing a nut food forest and that would work uh, but your fruit trees for example in here will start to get crowded out, will start to get shaded out. Uh, the other plants, anything else you have growing underneath here, really start to find it a little bit shady. <laughs> I mean, it's very shady in here. Even things like our blackberries, they're doing okay because they can take quite a bit of shade, but they're not going to produce quite as well as the ones that are in the sun. So that's what happens. Your plants can survive but they're not necessarily thriving we got a, a load of bird bath this wasn't actually a bird bath these are uh, these are fancy marble sinks we got a, a bunch of them uh, free Facebook marketplace happened to see somebody was giving <laughs> giving them away so I went and picked up a load and so we've put them throughout the orchard as bird baths. So that could be a reason the rough grouse is in here because there's water. It's had lots of food. There's all kinds of stuff to dig around in, in here. Uh, yep. Huh. I can see where, see where the chipmunk had liked to sit and husk those hazelnuts. Well, that's the end of it. Bo can smell that somewhere it's been going around. And yeah, it does. They, they cleaned off their share. Some of these oaks, this one isn't producing yet. They can take a while. Well, and this then so that's kind of the end of that foresty environment. Ah, I'm not sure. Do I keep it that thick? We will be pruning, especially the nitrogen fixers. So here we have honey locust there and behind that is black locust. And they are become really the dominant size tree in here. And when they're fully potted like that, I'm not so concerned because that tree is not going to grow as much. The male trees, so honey locust have, this is a female tree, and there's the male tree. The male trees continue to grow, seem to continue to grow quite a bit. Um, anyway, we'll do some pruning in here. We'll do some. These pear trees had incredible, I mean, huge amounts of pears, and in fact, so many of them fell they really kind of caught me by surprise because it was literally early the beginning of August and I thought beginning of August we don't have our fruit aren't ripe well yes they were ripe if you see a date has changed and a tree 
is due to be at a certain date, but you're early in the season. Well, it's early in the season. Your tree is saying, well, that's the time it is. For example, this is a leftover of the Spartan at the back. And these are kind of saying, you know, it's time. It's time to harvest. So they start to fall. So if it's time to harvest, it's time to harvest. So I need people to really pick this weekend. We need to empty some of these trees in a, in a big way. So um, that's that was that's the whole issue with the crop. I mean, there's a lot of fruit, and there's this in here. There's still a lot of fruit. <laughs> some asparagus I wouldn't put asparagus in here unless I almost put it as a shrub or a tree virtually because they'll need extra sun and I certainly wouldn't be putting them with plastic mulch why? well they see they've lifted the plastic because they're trying to come up around I just, yeah, they're not the right plant to put in this condition. One of the sea berries. And this one, yes, I would plant more of them. This looks like it's a female one. Sea berries are great nitrogen fixer. The only one in our climate that will give us a fruit or some sort of a crop. I mean, the others will give us a crop. Honey locusts certainly are giving us a crop, but not one that I'm making use of yet. And I say yet, I don't know what we can really do with it. Here's this amber autumn olive. Well, interesting, interesting. Yeah, it looks like a jungle, I admit. It looks like a jungle. This has had one mowing. Um, in one strip just really to access a bit there there needs to be now this week is is really going to be a big mowing week we got to do mowing in here <clears throat> we got to come in and mow you see these are indicating by the signs the number isn't the 23rd of october the number is the row number so we we number our rows and the sign indicates See, it's the top of the month, so it's early October. That's when this is harvested. When our arrows point, uh, when the arrows point, as this one does here, on our signs, I'm not convinced this is the best way to make signage, but it is one way. So this is, now it's pointing the bottom of the month. And when we do this, we usually indicate for people to walk through that lane, not so much this lane, because this one is now middle of September. See, it's pointing at the middle of the month, and this one is pointing at the end. So these are end of September. These are all ready to be picked in here now, because it's the middle of September, but they're absolutely ripe, and these are actually done by now. A few pears hanging on here, but these are there's still fruit in them but they're all ready everything's ready to be picked <clears throat> just want to show you what we've been up to last bit been pruning been pruning honey locusts and that's been a it's it's a big job we do it every few years that we really prune them down we don't prune them every year um, but we've been basically bringing them down so you see these rows and you see the honey locust and they can be really tall these are exceptions we uh, are letting these go on purpose but these two rows that shows you how they can be taller than that and we left a few here that we haven't pruned in those rows see how tall they can get but in here, we came in and we really pruned these down. So I like Jeff Lawton's take on it. He says, 
when precipitation is above evaporation, that's the time to really do a big heavy chop and drop. So we waited, yeah, we, mid-August is when we start to get some more reliable rains. And uh, this year it's been that. So we now we've been chopping these heavy. So that's, I mean, we leave some branches. I'm not doing a full chop where I'm chopping everything. Because if we do that, then next year we end up with so many branches and just more branches to chop. And like, okay, if you want to do that. And that's, that's one way to do it. I like to leave some branches because I know that the juice from that tree will go into the remaining branches. But then we'll take the branch like that one and we bend it down. So we're training them to make a compact tree. And the goal is that we have the trunk we allow one meter, three feet this way, and three feet that way. And the branches should fit in there. And anyone that doesn't fit in there, we cut it off. So it makes for a lot less space taken up. And it's like, it's been instant. Uh, it, it's been instant the effect of how much brighter in here and airier it is. I mean, that's, that's quite a load of branches in here that are down. And... We cut it now. Now that the leaves have been falling off, we see that you know we'll, we'll try with a flail mower, seeing if that will chop it up. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's really nice, really nice. And then the other purpose of having left uh, these branches and especially training them down. So here you see these branches see they've been trained down so that one has actually died which is fine and this one here we trained down and that one's died but you see the grapes are coming so here's our grapes and this one's done really well it's up already beyond the two meter six foot mark so that's what we want so we want our grapes that we put now to have more sun and honey locusts if we prune them this hard now the grape will start up next spring and will start growing before the honey locust even leaves out. And that's a good way because now we'll have... Huh, there's a little flock of birds who have moved in here. So that's what we want. We want the grapes to climb up in there. And these are all nice grapes. I think these are K-Gray. And we have a lot of Somerset we've put in here. So yeah, I see a nest in there. An Oriole nest now that... Now that things are opening up and we can see back in here again, this was a, this was a really big harvest in here. We had uh, pears and plums. This is a pear plum row mostly, two rows. And there was a lot of fruit, a lot of fruit. The honey locusts are starting to lose their leaves. Oh, it's Phoebe's. Phoebe, Phoebe, Phoebe. They like it because now, now that we prune, they hang around in the tall trees. You see that? And then they can see over here in the rows that are not as tall. And any insect flying there, they're going to be in here and hawking at them, getting them, eating them. Yeah, so we, yeah, we've been pruning these. It's a pretty big job. So we, we do it, yeah, no, not much more than half the day. There's another grape example now that the leaves of the honey locust are coming off. So that's what we want. That's the target. Because now the honey locusts are no longer not producing. So now we can consider these to be producing. Oh, a warbler. Look at that. Looks like a, is that a myrtle warbler? I'm not good with my warblers. But they're in here. This is this has been a good storehouse of insects. And it's been nice to see that insects haven't been a problem. It's been a huge year for some caterpillars. And we really have not suffered from caterpillars. So the resilience factor is in. I mean, this area... I, now it's I've seen it often enough that even in a really bad year of a lot of caterpillars like this year the orchard does not suffer I mean you wouldn't even notice a tree that had caterpillars because 
they never really got going. They might have eaten part of a branch and that was it, even though there was a lot of them. There's another grape. So these are really starting and now, now they're gonna really do. And so we have some of them, we have grape only like this one. Some of them we have kiwi only and we put kiwi on the north side. We want it to be delayed a little bit. And then some of them we actually have grape and kiwi. So we're trying all of them, all those combinations. And now, so we kind of found the nice workflow. We came in and we pruned, so that was step one. So we're pruning these trees hard, or at least the honey locust. That opens it up and it makes it easier also then to see when in the winter and early spring, when we're going to prune the fruit trees, we see what, you know, what's left to prune because now the tree kind of stands out. It's not overcrowded and, and filled up like see that honey locust. So that's been pruned back heavily. And here you see those, see we even trained a few of these branches. So here's a training wire. So we did it while we're pruning, we'll bend down and train some of these branches that are in the right spot. The right spot being, you see, oh, this grape didn't climb. We want this grape to actually catch on here and grab onto some of these branches, low branches. Oops, sorry. There, grab on and then start climbing these bent branches and use that as the trellis. That's the, that's the idea. And it's working pretty good. Just sometimes we have to come around and help the grape get started. So we prune, since these rows are done, are pruned, and we wait till it's harvested. So they're harvested, we come in and prune, that's the workflow. And then as soon as we're done pruning, so we just did up to here yesterday, we just did these, this row up to here. We got this done enough for that we could put in the chickens. And then we moved the chickens in here so that they can really do a job now and they are doing a great job and they're coming in and they scratch everything i mean we're gonna have to come in i think and salvage some plants because we have a whole bunch right there we have a whole bunch of garlic chives coming up so the chickens will completely scratch anything that's on the plastic so any of you who had comments or questions about the plastic the most important tool for the plastic is chickens because look at them go I mean I don't want to touch this fence because then uh, I'll get a charge out of that but they are gonna scratch everything on the plastic I mean they've only been in here since uh, yeah yesterday almost yeah around uh, four o'clock so not long and look at some areas like that right there you see they've taken the mulch and they've just made a pile out of it so the chickens really you think they're going to scratch and damage they won't scratch and damage this plastic mulch it's a four mil plastic they just do not i've seen them do it they're not looking to scratch to get under the plastic they're looking for the material that's on the plastic and they're looking to dig in there let me go in there and I can show you. I'm going to do this a little gingerly because I don't need to start off the morning with a, an electric blast. And yeah, these electric nettings. So it's a little tricky crossing rows. And we were talking about that yesterday. How the perfect situation would be to actually always pass in the same place. That would be the perfect setup because here we we're took more rows, so we're not doing that. But the perfect setup would be basically to prune a good access between trees, maybe even paint the plastic. So if we painted the plastic here, just a quick stripe along, just to know that when we're putting out the, the fence, we always put it in the same places and have access pruned out. That would make the most sense because using netting in trees, let me tell you, the netting can easily be a real pain getting caught in the trees. That is the big downfall of putting netting in among the trees is that getting caught. So 
yeah if we if that would be a good way to do it so here's these rows were pruned down and now let the chickens do the work but yeah look at how much they've they've scratched up in here and that's just that's yeah not even a day and they're very happy because this was quite a lot of fruit here's some crab apples that are down there and they will scratch and move everything so you see what happens the way they do it is they scratch and here's some young daylily plants they won't be able to scratch them because they're through hole in the plastic so they'll scratch all around it see like they did they scratched all around these plants and anything that's through the plastic which is the plants we want to keep they can't move them out the plant won't get uprooted but everything that is not in the plastic and I can see some here for example so here's some chive plants and the only reason they didn't get this one already is probably because this rock was here but you see these chive plants they're on the plastic there you go that's one whole plant of chives you see that and that's really a crazy easy way for us to propagate some of these plants and this is kind of an unfair advantage because nursery wise for some plants we can generate plants in a hurry really easily i mean i just dug that up literally dug without digging so you see the mat of roots haven't lost a single root of that chive plant it's all there we take this it's a little hard to show you with one hand but we literally just clump them up like that take this root ball put it in a pot and we've got a chive plant that we can sell so that's how easy we can we don't we don't bother seeding these things anymore they get seeded themselves all we're doing is quickly harvesting on the plastic mulch and get amazing, amazingly well-rooted plants. Don't know what that plant is. Huh. So there's some garlic chives that seeded themselves. A little hole in the plastic. And then when you get plants that are your crop seeding themselves in the plastic, that's a good situation. That is really good. That's what you want. So here's the rose. That's yesterday's chop. So we pruned these honey locust up here and everything got chopped up and we removed the large branches. So we did, it's a little more work, but we, we only kept the small branches. So even something that's you know double branched whatever normally we would have cut that so they're single branched and that's what that's what we leave and if we can integrate that into this soil that's a good addition we'll try even if we have to just trying it with the sharpen the blades on the lawnmower and try that uh, but that would be the goal if we can properly chop this up and reincorporate it into the soil that would be a that would be a big addition a big big plus because we've been removing branches and for a time that's good but eventually you do want the trees to get the added benefit of the nitrogen fixers here's a little bit of material that had accumulated from the mowings and the chickens will move all that around as well I did want to show you the effect of the chickens actually because their effect has been so spectacular after they've gone through so now you kind of see them in action in this area right now and their simple their simple simple pen there I heard some squawking so there was already eggs there this morning yes all holes are busy everybody's in the process oh, actually all six are busy and some of them are waiting look at that so there's one two three nest boxes they're all being sat on here's three chickens cruising because they want to lay eggs and in the far ones there's three chickens as well so 
that's what you want actually it's not like we're short we have the ratio should be one nest box per five chickens so we got 30 hens this one's getting a little antsy and sometimes what they do is they'll actually drop an egg right outside like i can't wait anymore so that one i think and we've got one that's been a very broody hen she had 12 eggs under her she just she wouldn't leave and she was laying her eggs and other chickens would lay the eggs and then she would just sit on them so this is their shelter and some of them slept on top they didn't all sleep inside and even a couple of them decided they wanted to roost on the branches in the in the fruit tree uh, then they have their feeders in front there food cover and water that's their three basics again i'll be careful going over this because i don't want to get shocked and i did not shut it off ah. come on bo oh bo knows there's a chipmunk hiding in there every time her tail is wagging uh yeah there's the chipmunk calling hey leave it in there Oh, he's right in there. Oh. She is one determined dog when she's chasing something. That will keep her busy for a while. I want to show you the chicken effect. So this was a little bit of a big move. It's big when we have to move from one one area to another normally we try to move them so these will be moved further ahead in the row and that's how we'll go through the orchard but we moved them from from here to over there and that's made for a little we have to make a corridor and move them in so here's here's where they were look at that you could see it here we had them in here for a week and boy when there's a lot of trees and there's less grass they'll scratch this to i mean there's nothing and in fact what's nice is now they've really shown me where my little honey locusts are and i'm going to use these to replant in the seedling orchard because these are all seedling trees look at this this is literally a, a, an orchard or seedling bed of honey locust this is all honey locust and i know it's a good tree this is right under this this big uh, mature uh, honey locust and so yeah they've kind of been seeded itself one of our old uh, propagation nursery beds so we've got this for for propagation we didn't do any this year but it's all here but look at this effect i mean they have come in here in a week and they had lots of room, but because the vegetation wasn't solid in here, it wasn't sod, it wasn't grass. Look at the effect underneath those tree uh, shrubs. They have done an amazing job. I mean, chickens work, they really work. And in this case, they work this area over really well. And you think, oh my God, it looks terrible. It looks destroyed. It's all, you know, they've denuded it. Uh -huh. Don't worry, they've actually, improve this because you see they're there and here's their calling cards boom 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 and let me tell you this grass will respond and i think even this tree here i'm gonna definitely propagate this one because it's doing extremely it's huge apples i mean look at that that's huge apples and it's just loaded down i don't even know the name we never this was a tree that this was part of the nursery here here going all the way in here this was our early propagation nursery and yeah they that was one tree left so this was so they just moved out of here yesterday this they were here a week ago look at the difference I mean, here looks bombed out. And then here's where they were just a week ago. And the grass has really responded. 
really well. I mean, this has come back with a vengeance. And this is our, our uh, grape collection. This is our kind of our original one where we were getting cuttings. And that's, oh, that's a nice grape. Prairie Star. Hmm. And this one is also some Prairie Star. And then we get into K Gray. You don't see them that much from this side. Actually, people did come in here and pick a bunch of these, so they're not nearly as loaded as they were. And then we get into our blue grapes. So there's some of the clusters. And if you saw in that earlier video, I did show you, you can see still the effect, all this here. It was, this was touched, but spared mostly from the frost. But the lower wire, because we did it on a two wire system, the lower wire, all this frosted and they still are, they hardly recovered. So, yeah, it's got frosted heavy at the bottom. And so this is, I mean, this isn't bombed. The chickens were in here. They had done an amazing job. And this is what I wanted to show you. So now this was a week ago and it grew and then bang, that's two weeks ago and it caught an extra rain. But I mean, this grass growth under these trees and all through here is phenomenal. It's, this was like, this was like that other first area. It was completely turned over. They had eaten down the hostas, but look, they ate the hostas even a whole lot, but here they come. Look, the hostas say, hey, these chickens that were in here, but you know what? They left us some good stuff. And so they're taking advantage of it. In fact, if it isn't thick enough and the hosta is not thick enough, then the grass will definitely move in. So we need, we need a couple more, a few more clumps in here. But if you have just a, a fruit tree, get a plant like this, put it in, fill it in so that you never have to mow. My big pet peeve with trees is people walking around with a weed eater and whippersnipping around that tree. If you've done that, please, I forgive you but throw away, give away, or never bring that weed eater to the base of the tree ever again. I mean, nine of 10 trees that, are, that die in an urban, suburban context, it is that exact reason. People whippersnipping and damaging the bark, <clears throat> damaging the bark down low. So this, I mow with a tractor, a, a little lawn tractor. And I can easily turn around this clump going around. Don't turn around the tree and bank it along that bark. You say, well, I don't use a whippersnipper. I use the tractor, but I use the tree and I turn. Don't do that, please. I mean, if you want less trees, do that. But if you want healthy trees, do not do that. Put some plants like these. There's a plant for every climate that will do well under a tree. Use those and fill in the spot. I mean, look at this one here. This is doing really well. These two are doing really well. I mean, look how thick that clump is. So the chickens were in here completely and they turned this down to, I mean, they completely turned it to bare dirt. And so these, plants will die down. In fact, in the spring, there's grass here and all here is just bare soil because these plants die right down to the ground and then they come up later on. But they give, they give you the effect of keeping you away from the tree. In fact, this one has had other issues. Uh, it's not from a weed eater, don't worry. These are actually 
you can see the effect here. There's the big walnut tree now. And look at that, dying, dying. And then those closer, dead, dead. So keep your, especially your apple trees, but most of your fruit trees, keep them away from walnuts. Put your walnuts far. These were the first casualties and they're completely done. I mean, that one's trying to hang on, but they're done because of the big walnut tree. I mean, yes, they are producing nuts, sure. And that's great, but keep your nuts far from your fruit. At least the walnuts, use hazelnuts instead. Yeah, that's, that was a, an issue. So that was what I really wanted to show you. Uh, we got some work done. We've had a great relaxed summer. The chickens are doing a lot of the work for us, which is great. I wish I had 10 times more chickens. And harvest is coming. If you're in the area of Southern Quebec and you would be interested, we'll still take on a few more members because we have a load of apples coming and four boxes of apples 160 pounds given free for a membership so yes you have to join as a member and it's a little late but even if it's just for apples i mean look at that crop sitting there ready to go uh that's a lot there's three boxes right there on that tree so consider joining if you're in this area and if not, then just look at it as I have one example and one way we're doing things. I hope you will be enjoying your abundance in a few years. Some of you, by what I see and hear, you've already started to see the crop come in and it's exciting and it's lovely to see that crop coming in and enjoy the abundance because when you're faced with abundance, some of you can't imagine having to give away well, it doesn't take long that you will be just about overwhelmed with how much crop is there. And overwhelmed is can be a problem. You don't know what to do with it because there's so much or just the harvest of them. But when we get 50 people on a day picking, it goes through some crop in a hurry. I hope you enjoy your abundance in the years to come. Hopefully already started. Thanks for watching. Intrigued? Check out the virtual tour of the permaculture orchard. Half trees already? Pruningcourse.com Subscribe, please. Check out some of the other videos or playlists. There's more to come. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Bye.